Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Shoe Snob unboxing videos. I know it's been a while since I've done one, but here we go. Today we got a brand that you possibly have seen around my blog and my Instagram, but I've never uh, done a video with them before. I've done a few reviews, um, and they go by the name of Paul Parkman. Uh, as you can see here, I have their box very heavy very interesting very unique compared to what i've received in the past uh let's take a look inside so i'll just quickly touch base that this is one of their custom boxes not what you get most of their shoes with off the bat i believe the last pair of shoes i reviewed had a green kind of standard shoe box so here's something special they do but that is on request let's take a look all right so inside the box is leather lined, except for there's cardboard in this one. Ah, so I see there's the box inside the leather box. All right, let's take a look at everything we got. Let me grab the shoes. So there's a little goodie bag here. So the pair of shoes and the box. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. All right, let's start opening up. So let's do the shoes first. There you go. Something very unique. You may have seen this on Instagram floating around. It's, uh, it's been a shoe that's gotten a little bit of attention. I've posted it for its interesting and unique patina. Let's take a look. All right, and let's look at the goodies inside. Here are the shoes. And then let's start talking about the brand. So here we got a matching belt to go with the shoes and which is lined in a grain leather, which is interesting. Not your typical kind of uh, standard belt lining that you find similar in shoes, which is a natural tan color, but lined in grain. And I actually find that belts lined in outer leather are more durable than the belts lined in regular leather. So that's kind of a, a positive right there, just to see that the belt seems like um, like a good construction there. Uh, they did want me to mention that all these goodies, so the box, the belt, the shoe trees, do not come standard with their products. They have to be added to it, but you can see the capabilities of what they can do. So let's take a look at the shoes. For those that don't know, Paul Parkman um, is a is, was one of the first and original kind of made in Turkey shoes that have you know quite an, an Italian inspiration uh, to begin with, starting out, um, but have now evolved into something a lot different than just Italian style shoes. This is like a blend I can't pinpoint the maker, but I want to say this looks like it has inspiration from uh, Franceschetti or there was a famous maker in Italy that used to be, that used to do a lot of Norwegian stitching on very pointy lasts. So you can see that's quite a, an extreme pointed last. So anyway, Paul Parkman, a lot of people ask, how are Paul Parkman shoes? Um, they're different, so to speak. I, I feel like what they're trying to do is make the best possible product they can uh, from you know Turkish skilled laborers. It's not gonna be, in my opinion, at the par of Italian, Italy, and French makers, but I see as the years progress, they're getting better and better. But what I like about Paul Parkman is the fact that they aren't afraid to be bold and make quite audacious designs and, and things that are different. And I always respect that. Even if I wouldn't wear the shoes, I always respect somebody who's doing something different and not afraid to not follow the mainstream norm on shoes of classic brogues and hole cuts. So, you know, I'm gonna be truthful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear this shoe, it's not my style, but I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate this uh, coral patina that they've done, which I found quite unique, you know, mixing blues and and oranges, browns, and whatnot, which, uh, you know, when when done right, is a beautiful color combination. It's a very bold one, not for the, the faint of heart, not for the common man, but for those that aren't afraid to be different, that's a shoe for you. So, these pair, this pair is one of their newer pairs, 
and this actually says that it's hand welted uh, on the website and they have a full line in so I can't really check the uh, the uh, accuracy of that but I'm seeing a stitch here on the bottom the thing about Paul Parkman and I've discussed this with the owner is I feel like the terminology they use is not 100% the way uh, it, it is described online they think they in my opinion all their shoes are blake rapid and we've discussed this before he tells me it's blake rapid i said well you can't say it's good it's not hand welted what they said that it's blake rapid by hand so i don't know why they wouldn't just write blake rapid by hand because then you know you're still showing that these things are done by hand but it's not exactly good you're welted uh nor hand welted from what i see because there's a stitch on the insole Hand welted shoes are stitch free on the insole because you're stitching the welt to the to the sole, not anything to the insole. So, um, but the Norwegian stitch is interesting. You actually have like two forms of it on the side and on the welt. Uh, the one on the welt is this dark kind of teal colored, so dark greenish blue. It's a pretty robust sole, which I actually don't mind a robust sole on a, on a smart shoe, but it's got a quite the, the supersized heel that looks to me about an inch and a half. Um, I can see kind of like where my standard heel would be on my shoes, and then they got an extra few layers there and a pretty thick, so you can see that this is the sole here that on the bottom, and it's quite a size, I wouldn't, I would, venture to say it might be a six a five to six millimeter sole so it's quite it's larger than your typical sole um and then a welt like piece of leather on the forefoot with quite a narrowed out waist so you can see that they're getting into this uh gatsian girlin style uh fiddleback waist which is you know this is now kind of uh, mainstream uh, everybody's taking this idea and rolling with it. You can see they have some nice tack details there, a bunch on the toe, some on the v-neck, and some on the heel. Uh, they're quite deep, so you don't gotta worry about slipping on the heel. Usually, it's not good to have too much metal on the heel because it can cause slip, but they've done a good job at pounding those quite deeply in there so you don't have that problem. Um, shoe trees look like a standard. They're not lasted, so uh, it's funny that I got a size 38 and a half and the shoe trees are a 40. The, uh, the sizing is massive on these things. So I'm normally a UK six and a half, US seven and a half, which is normally a 40 and a half. And these are a 38 and a half and they fit. So that's two sizes down. This is, you know, that's kind of, can be kind of scary when ordering online to like fathom in your mind that you're two sizes down from what you normally take but beware and bear that in mind um, but then again I have a narrow foot so if your foot is more on the broad side maybe you'll be fine in your standard size but I'd still I still do a bit of research on sizing anyway the thing about Paul Parkman is whether or not they're hand Blake rapid Goodyear welted whatever they are a sturdy shoe a durable shoe I have a pair of their loafers uh, that I've worn and they feel well they feel to me like a Blake rapid shoe but they feel robust and, and durable again it's not your standard typical English or Italian type make and style but it's a good blend of the two they seem to use a lot of very soft crust leathers which is quite obvious because almost all of their shoes are custom dyed so they don't really make like it's very rare you just see one color shoe or even if it is one color that it's a box calf there's always like variations so again paul parkman an interesting brand i've always respected their style i won't say that it's my type of shoe that i would wear some of them are actually nice and i would wear them um this one i decided to review because i thought it was really unique and i really appreciated all of the details they put together here on this shoe which i thought are uh, are cool i would definitely give these laces a miss because i'm not a baby blue fan but i love the other colors and i love this uh blend of a thin a thin waist with a norwegian stitch it's quite a 
a striking contrast because usually the Norwegian stitch is put onto something far more robust. Uh, you can see they have a leather, a red lining, which is a little interesting. It's like a, not red actually, it's more like a raspberry color, which is a nice touch, different to, you know, the standard lining again. So yeah, Paul Parkman, again, if you're looking for something unique, this is the brand to go to. Uh, they're definitely doing things that are different from your average dress shoe, classic welted maker. Um, even different than a lot of your bold Italian makers. So what I like is that they are unique and they all have a lot of unique offerings. And again, they're not gonna be for everybody, but I know that actually when I put pictures of Paul Parkman, there's a lot of people that like them. So if you're a, uh, a classic dress shoe snob, kind of like me, it might not be your thing, but if you're into things more bold, I suggest you give Paul Parkman a look. They are priced competitively. Um, some things, I don't know, they're on the expensive side. This shoe, for example, is $860. That is approaching uh, a Crockett and Jones hand grade shoe. So again, if you if you're a Goodyear welted snob, you may not go for this, but it is a solid shoe. I can tell you that the quality is there. That's a very decent, not decent. That's a good sole. It looks like good leather, um, and it's so thick. I mean, you're gonna have a hard time wearing through that thing. And with the nice nailing on the toe, you got a bit of protection. I always recommend toe taps, but when you have the nails there, you can at least let that wear down a little and then install the tap later. Yeah, Paul Parkman, something for the person not afraid to go bold. Uh, I hope you guys can hear this video better. I turned off the AC, I got a new phone, but my new phone doesn't work with my headphones that I bought previous, uh, excuse me, the microphone. These new phones have no uh, jack. Uh, for traditional headphones. So yeah, now I gotta look for a new microphone, but I think the quality of sound is better on this one. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Give Paul Parkman a look. If you are curious for things more unique, different, um, again, it's not your traditional stuff. It's not your traditional welted shoe, but uh, I like to show things that are different and I got a few other different type things that I normally you know, I'm trying to venture out here I can't uh, I love to be doing just uh, good your wealth and stuff but more and more shoemakers aren't doing that and are doing unique things so I'd like to be able to show the world different things that still I'd vouch for and a certain level you know uh, if I had to pick between you know, a G and G and this, I'd pick a G and G because I'm a, a welted snob and I like G and G. But I know there's a lot of guys that prefer that type of style, unique creativity over, you know, something that might just be quite conservative and classic. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Reach out to Paul Parkman. The owner is a really nice guy. They get back to you like that. Um, and yeah, check it out. They have some cool, interesting things. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more Shoe Snob unboxing videos. Have a great day.